All right, guys, welcome to early June 2024. Um, sometimes I can't believe that some of my oldest videos go back to the time when the wall was clean back here and I looked, well, not old or much younger. Listen, I got a lot of stuff going on um, and I got something really cool to share with you today. It is really cool in a number of ways, but um, what do I have going on here? Well, Gibson mandolin pre-1920. We put some braces in here and got everything. The curfing put on. Check out those clamps. Those are violin clamps. Those are about 100, 120 years old. Those are cool. I'm also fortunate to be working on a mando base that's about the same vintage and I'm putting the back on and the back of that thing is about that thick but when we bend arch tops back together and get the neck right you've seen us do a number of those um, which one do I want to show you um, oh the Galliano yeah putting that thing back together if you want to see the worst worst arch top I've done yet that's the one check it out up there but when you are gluing something that's as big as this 1918 Gibson Mando base which is built like a mandolin except much bigger you have to be able to pull everything back together this is going to end up riding the radius at the top of the neck and at the head block up there inside the body so we're working on this you're going to want to watch for that but oh before i get into this check out the new shirt from guitar 48 in ventura rob and the guys over at ventura guitar 48 will always do you right and they're gonna have one or two of the things that i'm about to show you maybe not the same brand or model but they'll have something over there we're going to talk about a lap steel today look at this this is a magnetone varsity lap steel look at that perloid cell celluloid whatever it is this thing you know how they wrap vehicles nowadays and put ads on them this actually has a wrap like that on it and i just got this the other day this is a clean one owner let me tell you so I have uh, done a lap steel before. I'm going to give you a link up there. It was the Gibson BR9. It was missing some parts and stuff, and I put it back together, and it went over to Guitar 48 on a trade, and it was gone just like that. So let me tell you a little bit about this. This popped up on uh, Marketplace. Yeah, I'm going to tell you about Marketplace. Um, and it wasn't that far from me, but of course I work far from my home and this come up at a price that just shocked me. And so I hit respond and I tried to lock it down right away and there were already two people within a couple minutes. So um, I offered a little bit more than what they wanted. The person told me, I'm really honest. Hey, think about that nowadays, right? Let me see if these people that are uh, speaking for it will get will come out and actually get it and if not I'll keep you in mind so I'm up early the next morning and I am driving down the freeway and bing it says those people can't make it you're next in line I could not believe it anyway there's a story behind this I don't want to get too deep into it but this has been in a family for a couple of generations that started off in Los Angeles. So let's start there. Um, again, this is a Magnetone Varsity lap steel. It's, a, it's got a wooden body underneath there and it's all wrapped. Um, it's got a, a kind of a humbucker pickup that is actually wrapped into the body um, and it's, you know what, when we get to the bench, I'll show you uh, what's going on because this thing is incredible 
the quality on it is incredible. It's got clues and tuners. It's got a metal uh, nut and a metal bridge and all kinds of these. These knobs are cool. Everything about this thing is totally cool, but we'll look close. So, Delbert Dickinson started a company in Los Angeles called the Dickerson Musical Instrument Company in the late 1930s. Now, what was going on was pickups were just starting to come into fashion. You know I work on arch tops, and arch tops were made to magnify sound, and somebody named Brewer went out and grabbed up about five musical instruments and took them, I think, into Kansas somewhere, Google this first pickups. And then Rickenbacker made a lap steel, and then Gibson started making lap steel. So about 1937, 1938, you have people coming out with lap steels with pickups on them. Um, some of them look like a frying pan, etc., etc. Anyway, the Dickerson Musical Instrument Company sold uh, just before 1940, and by 1946, it had sold again, and. Art Duhamel, is the, if I'm crucifying that name, read it on Wikipedia yourself or Reverb, is that's where I got this information. But um, they did amps, and if you can find Magnetone amps from that era, oh boy, you've got something. Anyway, Magnetone went on from uh, the mid 40s, it was Magna Electronics Company. Uh, and they built this one. So this was what they would call a student instrument. Um, and Magnetone kind of went, let's say they were more invested in their amplifiers and things than these. But I want to be fair about this. Something that you need to understand. Say this was made about 1955 or so. There hadn't been lap steels on the market for 10 years by that time and so um, if you take a look at Lloyd Green um, he's got an, an interview I think I'll try to find you a link there's a series of interviews with Lloyd Green he's a great steel guitar player uh, but he will tell you that when he first started within a couple years um, the, the, the pedal steel guitars that he was playing, they were advancing so quickly that people would just be out of the market. You would hear people, the studio musicians, it went from two pedals to I don't know how many they have in one neck, two necks, three necks. So um, <laughs> to say that this was a student instrument, I think they were all student instruments by the time the mid 60s came along and then there was a, a leap forward. I have liked a song called Blue Bonnet Rag by Speedy West. I have always, I think, liked um, steel guitar, which took me into slide music because I was around, don't ask, but I was around a beer joint or two when I was a very small kid wearing them pajamas with uh, footsies in them. Anyway, great parenting. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this thing to the bench and we're gonna take a look at the condition it came in and see if there's anything wrong with it and fix it up and get it uh, where it needs to be and then um, we'll close this out after that. Let's get to the bench. All right, let's make sure that our camera is lined up um, properly and that this isn't gonna fall off of here, but where's Chick Flick Teal Pointer? We're gonna want Chick Flick Teal Pointer, that's for sure. So let's flip this over. First thing I want to tell you is I got a bright eyes, baby, whatever this is. It has a magnet underneath. Notice that there's a couple screws there. Not only are there screws there, but they're in a place where I want them to be. Don't lose parts. Please don't lose parts. Okay, so there is a serial number on this thing. 47433. Three. Now, if I take that off, we're going to find out that the nut that is metal has a bolt on it and a nut is underneath there. So look at the clues and tuners here. Um, I'm balancing this thing precariously. But if those aren't some George Jensen type stuff, um, I don't know what is. Now, I've taken 
a little bit of Marvel Mystery Oil, that's the best stuff in the oil field, and put it in here. So these things are going to be um, working good for me in the next day or so. And I can take my gadget here and put this on here and work them either way, like so, and loosen them up good. I'm going to do that. That's a good thing to do. Just be really careful. I have never in my life seen tuner buttons that look like that but again underneath here the serial number tag is the knot that holds the metal or the, the knot that holds the knot on yeah there's a threaded uh, piece that comes off of the knot now this is some kind of feels like some industrial floor covering that you put on that you paint on so people don't slip but we get into this area here and this is the string holder this goes all the way through the body and then you have the electronics in here you just pull these two off and it is on there um, the electronics are all there believe it or not and this is some heavy industrial jack here. Of course, one of the things that always happens, never fails, is the nut comes off of the input jack and then things start twisting around. So don't do that. But this is some industrial thing here, heavy duty. And it still works. Okay, so we're gonna get to work right away on this thing. Um, remember me telling you that the nut is metal and it comes off it's a little bit corroded there but there is the bottom of the nut it looks like it might have popped off and so when i take that tag off of there that tag is riveted the serial number tag i don't know that i want to do that so i've got some thousand grit sandpaper here and it's wet dry so i put it in here and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go along where this corrosion is and just lightly do this and you can see it getting all strange and mushy we do the same thing with 1850 1850 violins that we're taking the finish off of you're going to see more of that here but this is a real easy way to do this and takes it right off i can take some mother's polish you know the kind that you he was on like a 1970s chopper. What am I talking about? If you're supposed to know, you'll know, believe me. But anyway, that will come off pretty simple. That just sits in here like that. Good. Now, the tuners on this thing are really, really cool. I've got a piece of red wire that I want to show you. Uh, what's going on here before we move any further down the neck these are slotted and there is a hole down in the middle here everything doesn't go through there's not a hole that goes through like most um, tuner pegs this drops down into a hole right there you see that the end of the string drops down there and then you would go around like so man wouldn't it be cool if we could just use this kind of wire It'd be so easy and then you just do what you normally do and there's arguments about all that and you just cinch that up like that and then you turn these around like so i always do that because it locks the string over the top now this won't bite because it doesn't have threads on it or it's not wound but anyway it, it's just like that you see that now what i want to show you here is that i need my pointer definitely if you look real close right here that one looks normal but when you spin it around you'll see that it is broken one of the things is missing you see that every other one has two this one has one so when we go to put the string on there we're going to make sure that we start back 
where it's this way, like so. Again, these uh, tuning peg heads are so awesome. Now, let me move this down a little bit and get it in the workstation. I like this workstation a lot because it's got neoprene pads there and it'll and everything swivels to accept any neck you want to put on. Now we're going to get back to our sandpaper. Believe this or not, there's a little bit of looks like stickers or something or other on there. And so we're going to take a little bit of, again, this is thousand grit paper. And this is some kind of plastic. So we're just going to knock that stuff off there like so. And be very careful. And it'll just take that stuff off. Now the frat markers are, I think this is probably a piece of paper under here. There are no frets, those are just markers because you're running a slide over the top. But it is 22 and 3 8 scale is what it is. So um, I've taken um, and tested the screws here. Uh, it comes up and then the cool thing about this, let me check the camera angle. Yeah, this part right here is thick, about so thick, and it's straight right here, but it curves to the body here, and this thing is, allows you to get your fingers up off of the, uh, the fingerboard, and um, the cool part is you can see here that this is wrapped, this whole body is wrapped, everything around where the pickups and potentiometers controls all that is wrapped now there's one spot right here that looks a little bit different can you see that it looks like there's been a patch on this at one time right here i don't know what happened or why it would happen but that's coming up just a little bit there and we're going to seal that up um Moving along here, let's get this up just a little bit more. I want to make sure you can see the controls and all that here. How are we on the angle? Say something in the comments. I'll read it two weeks later and know that we made a big mistake. Okay, when I got this thing, the um, strings were bottomed out, and we'll figure out why here in a minute. But again, I've got that. This is just a cover that goes over everything. And there's two screws, one on front, one on back. And, and see, I'm going to put those on there like so. Um, because I'm weird about that. I like putting everything back to where it was. But I plugged this in when I got home with it. And it was, the strings were bottoming out. This is very interesting. This pickup is wrapped the same way the body is. You can feel the uh, magnets up here and them dogs out there know what's going on too. But this is just screwed down into the wooden body. Now, um, this thing will scream, I can tell you. Yeah, you can see the magnets there, but this is wrapped. This is one of those things where I think if you take this off the body, it's going to be more trouble than it's worth. But what had happened here, oddly enough, is that these, I pulled up on these and these were nails. I want to show you something here that you really, really want to pay attention to. Right there is a wire. Do you see that? There's a little cut coming up and a hole through the body. This is the grounding wire that grounds the pots and everything to the strings and that's how it's grounded. So, it's really important, guys, on old arch tops that have pickups or any guitar with a pickup, 
and especially a trapeze, you want to make sure that you know where that is because if you lose that, you'll have grounding problems and you'll never know why. So this, we're just going to do what we did with our um, sandpaper. Make sure it's nice and wet. Touch it up a little bit. And then again, we're going to put some mother's polish on it. Want to make sure that there's nothing there that's going to cut and wear strings prematurely. But there we go. Um, now, what happened here is there are, this body is just wood. And so what happened here was the screws stripped out. So what we're going to do is I have already um, taken the sandpaper and sanded this down and I've put a mark on right there. That's the depth these need to be. So I'm going to take some hide glue. Of course, I'm going to use 1850s violin maker hide glue. Of course I am. That's all I use. And I'm just going to put those down in there like that and glue those up. And then before I get them in there, I will cut them off. Uh, on that mark right there and then tap them in and then we'll just do a pilot hole and we will put screws back in here and put this thing back together that's really all this needs all right little hide glue stuff is awesome and the nice thing about it is you can heat it up and anything that is glued to will come loose of course, it's got to be real hot, but. Again, we want to watch that wire right there. It's so quiet, you can hear the birds. Get this back in the hot water. I've got a heater over here. My fingertips are gone from. There we go, let's let that dry for a bit. Okay, while we're waiting, we're gonna take uh, our magic. I can't tell you what it is, you see, but it's, it looks like salad dressing. It's got three parts in it. If it wasn't for the other two, you could drink it. <laughs> there you go. But this is a white ball 80. It is a dustless paper rag. And I have gone around and I've got a little gadget that lets me put. Oh, that amp is trying to kick up. It lets me lube up these pots and clean them so they're not so crackly. But this is good stuff. I can feel that given a little bit. We wouldn't want to put that pick up out in the open and uh, look how dirty that is. You wouldn't think that, but it is. This is great stuff. Like I said, we use it on anything and you can tell when things get clean, it starts to squeak. The old people know what squeaky clean means. We can use it on this once we've taken the white sandpaper to it. Yeah, queen one owner. There we go, there's our pilot holes now. You know anywhere I work, there's gotta be Chick flick teal screws, you know that. So, we'll make sure that this wire is right there. 
we're gonna put the chick flick teal screw right there that is we're gonna turn the clutch way down on this thing we want to always start those by hand we're gonna do the rest of this by hand here these don't don't move that's a good thing they probably never have but again I had the clutch set really low on this now it's time to put some strings on it all right we are going to put a set of regular slinky Ernie balls on it 46 36 26 17 13 and 10 and we're going to turn it to open D you know why because these are the only strings and the only tuning I know that's why okay so I want to tell you something here these little ferrules or grommets or whatever you want to call them keep popping out of here so I'm going to take some rubber cement and a little piece of a stick here and I'm gonna put a little bit of that down in each one of these when I put the strings on that'll tighten it up because if you lose one of these what ends up happening is you're gonna have strings cutting across the body and on top of that you want to look at these and make sure that there's not a split in them when they made them and make sure that that split because I use like wrist pins when I do cigar box guitars and if you put the wrist pin to keep for a string holder and you don't pay attention it'll drop right down into the groove of the wrist pin and that won't be good yeah all of these are just kind of sitting in there. Last thing you want is to take the strings off one of these. And then while you're carrying it around, you don't notice and one of these hits the floor. I saw somebody has stripped one of these down uh, for parts. And the cost of what they want for parts, like this, don't want two hundred dollars for that this thing who knows you're kind of at the whim I alluded to the fact that the person I got this from was really really honest let me get this shot up here you want to remember that these again the end of the string drops down into the tuner so you're gonna have to cut these so we're gonna have to just kind of ballpark it and cut the strings off like so I think we're gonna have to put a little spacer under this maybe um, I've got this hooked up to a Fender Frontman 25R it's a digital amp it's not a tube amp remember I don't play um, it's tuned to open D and I got this thing right here so see what it'll do we'll quit right there I can fix these things there wasn't much to fix on this but we'll get this off to somebody can play it oh. Oh, oh, oh. it is alive and I think it's scary um, <laughs> yeah I think I'm gonna pull the strings just a little bit up off that by putting a little spacer in there but okay here's the story Aunt Judy before she was Aunt Judy when she was about six years old in Lancaster California Lancaster California that's right 
cultural capital of the world. Anyway, Aunt Judy, before she was Aunt Judy, was about six years old and remembers that somebody went down to the music store down on probably what is Lancaster Boulevard now and picked this thing up. And she tried, remembers trying to play Three Little Indians on it. Now, Aunt Judy is not my Aunt Judy because Aunt Judy, now Aunt Judy, is not uh, much older than me. So, uh, yeah, thanks, Aunt Judy, for the story. And thanks to the relative of Aunt Judy that handed this off to me. So, I think that there's something called Grand Old Echo at the Echoplex uh, at uh, on Echo Park Boulevard on the 16th of June. Uh, it's called Grand Old Echo. So they have like different bands come in. You might see Restaurant there. You might see RT Valeen there. You might see... Uh, I think I'm going to take this down. There's an artist there. I think I'll tag them in the Instagram post and challenge their steel guitar player to take this monster uh, during sound check or something, give it a spin and see what it'll do. And if that's the case, I'll punch this in so you can hear it. But moral of the story here is they made some really cool instruments in the 1950s and here is one of them I glad I'm glad that I ran across this this is not my cup of tea so we'll find a home for it I think Rob will find someone maybe Aunt Judy wants it back I don't know I'm telling you this thing is mean you get this on a big amp you will clear the room with it I gotta go try and find out what Three Little Indians is find the song and learn how to play it so hey Thanks for watching this. I enjoyed working on this. There is nothing like picking up something like this and doing a few little things to it and having it good to go. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, and I will see you next time. I got some weird stuff coming your way, but then again, I always do. See you soon.